Hey, what's up? I'm Liz. This is Blitz DIY, and I, like many people who are into electronics, have a favorite IC, and mine is the MSG EQ 7. If it is possible to feel sentimental about a through hole 8 dip package, then I am certainly sentimental about the MSG EQ 7. For those that aren't aware of this chip, it's basically a 7 band graphic equalizer filter, which is a technical way of saying that you can throw this chip into a circuit, uh, have an audio input that's uh, being fed into one of the pins, and have it output a visual representation of that audio input, and that visual representation is often in the form of LEDs or something similar. That output from the chip is split into seven different frequency bands, uh, ranging from the low end or the bass uh, up to the high end or the treble, think things like cymbals, stuff like that. Uh, so if you're like me, and you love music, and you love pretty lights, and you love electronics, it's basically a dream come true. You can do some really awesome projects with it. Beyond the specs, though, uh, what makes this chip really special to me is that it was the first uh, IC that I ever played with when I was first getting into electronics when I was using Arduino for the first time. And it was actually the first project project I ever did uh, outside of just following along with some example code out of their Arduino IDE. And I remember just feeling so excited getting it working and just... Um, feeling like the sky was the limit. And that was really my intro into the world of electronics and kind of what was possible with code and open source and everything. So to say that MSG EQ7 is special to me is kind of an understatement. And I was recently reminded of all these projects when I had a question come in about the PC Lights project on how to modify the code. Uh, and also just warning, that code is scary. It was the first code I really wrote without referencing example code. So proceed with caution if you ever look at it and try to use it. Yeah. But it reminded me that in kind of the back of my head, it was on a list, that ever-growing project list, uh, to try to port that example code from Arduino to Circuit Python, see if I could get it working on that platform. And let's change views to the desk to see how that went. So spoiler alert, it it worked. If I turn off the overhead light on the desk, you can kind of see it reacting to my voice a little bit right now because it's going through this mic. So let's talk about the circuit a little bit. Uh, basically, we've got an Itsy Bitsy M0 board from Adafruit operating the whole thing. Uh, seven LEDs, each of them with a 22K ohm resistor. Pretty hefty resistor, but it was getting rid of a lot of the noise I was experiencing because right now the rest of the circuit's a little bit clunky because this is actually the proto board that I use in uh, my NeoPixel PC LED setup. So I basically took the Pro Trinket out and I'm plugging some jumper wires into those headers there. The circuit's happening there. And then this uh, tiny little headphone jack, which is the only one I had on hand at the time, uh, is receiving the audio input and some jumper wires, some female jumper wires are hooked into those tiny little pins. So it's making a little bit of noise. And you're probably seeing these crazy lines right now on this little scope. This is a chibi scope. It's kind of like a Tamagotchi-esque scope. It has a couple different functions. Um, you can do volts. Uh, that's the volts right now. Uh, and then it can also do a waveform mode. That's what the waveform is right now. It's basically reading the input from the MSG EQ7. And what's really cool about this is you can see each waveform being sliced up. And using this tiny little scope, even though it's very simple compared to what you would get from like an actual scope, was very helpful when going through the code to make sure I was getting the right values out. And speaking of code, I kind of want to take a high level look on how the two programs compare to each other. Uh, Arduino, which is based in C, and CircuitPython, which is based in Python. Of course, I like to do um, this as an exercise every once in a while, converting um, Arduino code to CircuitPython code and vice versa, just because it kind of stretches your brain a bit, I think. Um, or at least I feel like my brain gets a little stretched when I do that. Because um, you just have to kind of really think... Um, in terms of each language and how they're interpreting your different uh, commands for the microcontroller. And uh, you also get to see the strengths and weaknesses of each language too, kind of like, oh, this is a little bit simpler in CircuitPython, something might not be as simple in Arduino or vice versa. So uh, it's an interesting exercise. I recommend it. And it also just gets you more fluent in both languages uh, at the same time without even really having to, to try too much. So let's, let's, uh, let's dive in. So we start out with the library imports in CircuitPython. We don't need those in Arduino, so they're not over there. 
And then we're declaring our pins. Uh, the MSG Q7 uses three pins to communicate with the microcontroller of your choice. Reset strobe, DC, and then our LED pins. Reset strobe, uh, DC, our LED pins. And after that in Arduino, we go to the setup portion of the code. Uh, in Python, there's a little bit more setup for the LED array, basically setting up to utilize pulse width modulation. And then this is followed in CircuitPython by a function to read the analog input from the MSG Q7, which will be called in the loop. Uh, and so this kind of brings us to the loop in both portions of the code. You see, this code isn't like that complicated, which a lot the chip is doing a lot of the work for us. So in both programs, uh, the first three lines are basically identical. We're just kind of resetting the reset pin uh, by turning it on then off with a slight delay in between. Now, uh, one thing of note when you're going between the two, Arduino delays utilize milliseconds. CircuitPython delays utilize full on seconds. So you're gonna get a lot of decimals in CircuitPython when you're doing delays. Uh, and you'll notice that this is not a true conversion from milliseconds to seconds. Uh, we are going to kind of talk about some of that math a little bit later because it, I had some funky things happening. And then after that, both programs move on to a for statement uh, using their different syntaxes. Uh, both are basically saying that for the variable i, we're gonna be counting up to seven, allows seven frequencies to come through, be assigned to each LED. We're then gonna set the strobe pin to low, have a delay of 35 milliseconds, which comes from the data sheet, actually from the chip. That's uh, that's the timing the strobe pin is expecting to be able to get the division correct. Uh, and then you can see there's, I have a little comment in CircuitPython for the timing that I mentioned uh, a couple seconds ago. Uh, so we'll go into that in a bit. And then we get into the action of actually writing the data to the LEDs. Uh, in Arduino land, we're mapping the analog value to pulse width modulation value. You've probably seen this a bunch of times. You take your integer, you use map, spectrum read 0, 10, 24, 0, 255. That's making it so that the range of values it's going to be looking for is going to be 0, 255 rather than 0 to 1024. Um, and then there's a little bit of a noise filter in Arduino, basically like, and actually it's commented out. So let's comment it back in. Uh, if that value is less than 50, uh, you're going to take that and divide it by two so that basically it's not going to read into the LEDs. And over in CircuitPython land, we have the LED array, eyes placeholder. We set the duty cycle for pulse width modulation. Arduino, CircuitPython, they kind of handle pulse width modulation a bit differently. So basically we set the duty cycle for pulse width modulation set to be equal to the analog input being translated uh, to an integer, see it's being converted there, uh, so that it all works because that duty cycle is expecting an integer to be able to have it work. So we're actively getting the uh, current analog value with this line right here. And same thing over in Arduino, analog write pulse width modulation value, which comes from here, which is connected to spectrum read, which as we see here is the analog read of that pin right here. They're all connected. It kind of waterfalls down to here and it writes to the LEDs. Then in Arduino, there's another delay. Um, I don't have that in CircuitPython. I didn't find it to be necessary. I found it kind of slowed things down a bit. And again, we set the strobe pin to high or in Python true uh, so that it's kind of resetting the pin into its default state. So hopefully this shows you uh, that you can port code back and forth for the most part, of course, with microcontroller projects. Just a matter of utilizing the correct syntax, knowing how different languages utilize different processes, like how CircuitPython sees pulse width modulation, how Arduino is utilizing delays, things like that. Uh, and speaking of timings, let's let's talk about timings. Uh, when I converted the 35 milliseconds um, here into CircuitPython as 35 milliseconds, uh, the code was extremely slow, <laughs> like upsettingly slow. I actually thought it was an M0 processor issue. I tried it with a Metro M4 board and it was running the same. So that kind of made it so that, okay, this is a code problem. So I started experimenting with different timings and noticed it ran a lot better, but it had to be a fraction of 35 so that the timing would remain correct for the strobe pin. So I landed on point zero 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 seven to have the best iteration and that's point zero three five 
divided by 500. Yeah. Uh, so I have a similar fraction happening for the reset pins delay so that they all kind of stay relative to each other because I found that was important as well. And you can see this in action here with this uh, waveform. I uh, can see that each individual pulse that's entering is a result of the strobe pin. So those are these like very fast square waves that are going in kind of constantly. Each square wave is being sent as a static value. And if we move the scope's data pin uh, to one of the array's outputs, I can just touch the resistor. You can see that it's a much more stable waveform that you would expect. And so when we move it to one of them, we're seeing a more traditional waveform showing just one frequency. Think of it as like individual square waves being smushed together that correspond with each frequency here. And then uh, that is being so that every output has a more dynamic waveform. It's all happening so quickly uh, that you, I mean, I don't think the scope is really handling it. I think we're probably seeing a delayed reaction, but it's at least giving us a visual on what's going on. So it's kind of cool to have a, a secondary visual of what's going on. And you can see when I talk, it does change a bit. Um, so that in combination with the LEDs was really helpful uh, when I was working on the code to make sure everything, all the timings were right and everything like that. And it's been really helpful when I've been doing some other forms of this code as well. So why do this? Well, first off, it's fun. Uh, second of all, it's a great learning exercise anytime you are kind of stretching your brain a little bit to try something new. Third, you get to see LEDs bounce around to music, but I, I guess that kind of falls under the, the fun category. Basically, I just kind of wanted to try porting it to get some example code if you wanted to use the MSG Q7 with Python. Uh, I wasn't seeing a lot of examples out there, and I thought, you know, CircuitPython would be a great candidate for it. And I have that code uh, that we just went over uh, up on GitHub, and I'll have it linked down in the description in case you want to take a look at it um, and try it out. And uh, posting up that example code, that kind of leads me to what this video kind of is. It's kind of a kickoff for a couple, a couple of projects that I want to do using CircuitPython and the MSG EQ7. I want to try it out with a couple different types of LEDs. I want to do LED matrices. I want to do NeoPixels, also some traditional LEDs, but doing something a little bit different other than just having the seven spectrums. Uh, and this will lead to some cool project write-ups, uh, possibly some custom PCBs, uh, and just also kind of beefing up the example code uh, aspect for the MSG Q7 in CircuitPython. And I'm already actively working on a lot of this code and playing around. It's been really fun. It's just not totally ready to show yet, but hopefully it will be soon. I'm really excited for these projects. They're just really fun to work on. Like I said earlier, this is kind of going back to my roots with electronics and coding and how I got started. So to revisit that with fresh eyes and kind of putting it on a different platform is really exciting uh, and just really fun, uh, not to overuse the word. Uh, I love LEDs and audio. That's kind of like my favorite things about electronics. And uh, it probably in the past year, I'd kind of shied away from doing projects kind of in that genre because it felt like it wasn't new, a new enough idea that it wasn't pushing the boundaries far enough. Because you see all these awesome projects out there, people using like artificial intelligence and machine learning and all this crazy stuff. And it feels like if you are, you yourself aren't doing something new and exciting and fresh that you're just kind of making a lot of noise. You're not really like making anything that, that matters. But that attitude is kind of a bunch of noise too, you know? I, I think LEDs and audio, you can't really go wrong, and I love them. I think other people like them too. So I'm going to do a couple projects in that and kind of try to get back to basics and not worry about uh, being all cutting edge and cool and trying to do things that are hard just because they're hard. But that's going to do it for this video. If you liked it, toss me a thumbs up, leave a question or comments down below. Down in the description, I'll have a link to the code we looked at up on my GitHub, as well as a data sheet for the MSG EQ7. Thank you for watching. Consider subscribing more content like this, specifically, literally more content on the MSG EQ7. Uh, and until next time, this has been Blitz City DIY.